Greetings, dear friends. I present to your attention the most common malfunctions and breakdowns that occur on this Coda Octavia. Motors for Octavia are stocked up in abundance. In principle, they can be divided into four groups, each of which has two or four versions of slightly different capacities, with different control systems and auxiliary units. The present is the most popular unit, the A12 1.6, with a capacity of 100 102 horsepower. To many, it should already be familiar from the description of the PSA series engine on the Golf 5 but its elaborators were installed here. However, the essence is the same, it is a very reliable and quite high torque engine. All its repair problems are inexpensive, if you change the timing belt every 60,000 in time and keep an eye on filters and all. Infrequent occurrences of piston ring sticking are usually the result of either operational problems or high mileage combined with a very measured pace of movement. Other problems such as failure of control system elements, throttle contamination, ignition values and attachments are not a particular problem. The engine often travels 300,000 km before the first major interventions, for which he is appreciated. This is the most popular Octavia engine. Vico 1.4 engines are very different, a rare 60 HP AMD motor. This is an old motor from the times of Czechoslovakia. It is lower in the central injection. Its power is frankly small, there are no service specialists as well as spare parts. A simple designing principle can work for a very long time, but still breaks. In general, it is strongly not recommended, except for some fans of the Czech exotic. Fortunately, cars with it were not officially delivered to us, as in most European countries. But the engine is 1.4, 16 well, with a power of 75 or 80 horsepower, a completely different calico. This engine is from a much newer family, which is still in production. For example, its relative of CF and A motor can also be found on Rapid, the hair to the first Octavia. The timing chain and 16 valve do not make it competitor to a simple 1.6 in terms of fraction, but they greatly increase the cost of maintenance and reduce reliability, because the chain of resource here is relatively small. Rumors about non repairability are not unfounded. unfounded. Indeed, there are problems with this if you try to do everything according to factory technologies. But in reality, there are no problems. With runs over 200, the motor is most likely already overhauled. Their only question is how well. I repeat that the technologies here need to be replied not from the factory, because there are no repair sizes for a number of parts. The family of 1.8 and 1.8 T engines with a capacity of 125, 150 and 180 horsepower is very successful. Motors are good and strong, somewhat mechanically complex but well executed. Their main problems are either a failure of the control system, and this is especially true for turbocharged engines, which have twice as many important sensors, you need to monitor the tightness of the intake system and the turbine. Other maintenance errors. They often forget about servicing the timing chain, only change the belt or use low, all quality oils, pumps, belts and rollers. Unfortunately, breakdowns of such a motor are very expensive, but with proper maintenance the resource is excellent, 300,000 is clearly not the limit. On triple key turbines of the early years of production, a typical problem is the zeroing of the vest K12 shaft, which leads to the risk of detonation and damage to the piston group. Tulatory A12 engines are surprisingly unpretentious but the unsuccessful piston group often cokes and the cranky ventilation system suffers. This is due to the rather high operating temperature of the engine, over 105 degrees. But in terms of the mechanical part, the motor is close to 1.8 motors, also belong to the old EA113 series and is extremely reliable, including because of the simplest design. Diesel engines are extremely rare, even rarer than turbocharged 1.8s, but are generally considered reliable and proven engines. Only the purchase of the most powerful option, the 130 horsepower ASZ model, it's not recommended. It has a relatively small resource, an expensive turbine and capricious fuel equipment. In addition, gearboxes do not withstand it well. The choice of gearboxes comes down to a choice between several types of manual gearboxes, almost all of them are 5 speed, and only the most powerful diesel engines are equipped with a 6 speed one. These boxes are quite reliable as long as they have oil in them. Over time, the cable drive of the box may require adjustment. First of all, this affects the force of a engaging the first gear. Another surprise for economical owners may be the clutch on 1.8 and 2.0 engines. In some cases, a two-mass flywheel is used here, which caused more than 400,000 troubles. But the four-speed automatic is a Type 01M box produced by Volkswagen itself. These boxes are considered not the best option. They work noticeably worse than automatic transmissions from ZF and IC, and they require repairs much more often. The latest versions of these boxes found on Skoda are famous for several typical problems. The valve body, for example, requires fairly regular cleaning, even when changing the gearbox oil every regular 60,000 km. First of all, the valve dust valve, which is responsible for blocking the torque converter and the main pressure control valve suffer. The newer solenoid also suffer greatly, the life of which before the first repair is 680 years. 
as well as speed sensors and wiring. If you really need an automatic on old car, then do not be afraid, its repair has been mastered to perfection. But in this case, old doesn't mean either reliable or inexpensive to repair. It is not for nothing that BMW abandoned the production of its automatic transmission in favor of the ZF5 HP19. The purchased ones turn out to be both more reliable and cheaper than their own. All wind drive modifications are rare and are strongly discouraged for purchase, primarily due to problems with the drive clutch. At the time, the Holdex coupling was not yet the most major design, as a result, it had a very short service interval 30,000 km. Moreover, as a rule, the second and third owners of such machines often forget to service it or are generally in the dark about the fact that it is necessary. Therefore, all wheel drive caveats have been purely front wheel drive for several years now. Couplings quickly fail when the old properties are lost, and restoring them or replacing them with a contract unit is too expensive for a budget car. The suspension of the car pleases with predictability. The resource of most of its components is far beyond 100,000 km. Only the wheel bearings, the rear supports of the L-shaped levers and the thrust of the interval bars serve less. The server's life of shock absorbers, front start supports, ball bearings and silent blocks of the rear beam is usually at least 120-150,000 km. The rear suspension of all wheel drive versions is only slightly more expensive to maintain due to a large number of silent blocks but the resource is no less than that of front-wheel drive suspensions. The steering rack, which runs over 150,000 km, usually caps, but the flow is in no hurry. But the steering column hinge can fail. Most of the steering play doesn't apply to the rack. The body is considered by many to be superbly protected from corrosion, but they are quite not right. You need to follow it as well as check when buying. On inexpensive Octavius, the quality of painting leaves much to be desired. The paint often peels off on the thresholds, arches and bottoms of the doors, but you should not rely on high-quality galvanizing. If you do not restore the paintwork, then rust will quickly remind you of itself and take root in numerous seams. However, the problems are typically of recent Volkswagen history. The, the problem is not in the weakness of the body and its color, but in the fact that the corrosion resistance is often overestimated and the most expensive part of the car is not properly monitored. In addition, engine is already a full swing on older cars. Door seals are falling apart, hinges are sagging, the gas stops of the back door are causing a lot of trouble. It is heavy and in addition to various knocks on the gas on the go can also heat up the unlucky driver at the moment when he doesn't something takes it out of the trunk. Moreover, the case may not end with a bump. She breaks her fingers and hands easily. Be sure to check it when buying. The quality of the finishing materials doesn't make your blush. It is completely German, the same as Golf and its other competitors were supposed to. But over time, the interior design begins to creak, and most of its problems will not be related to age, but to unsuccessful reinforcing work. In general, the great advantage of the machine is the absence of frankly weak and problematic notes. There are almost no typical problems here, while the overall quality of workmanship remained high until the very end of the release. A few problems with the electrical part, failures of generators, ABS units, fans, sensors are very unobstructive and cheap to fix. A slightly shorter service life of some components, such as a hydraulic clutch and other little things, can be associated with an abundance of service cars with highly twisted fronts and tucked operation. Otherwise, the cars turn out to be a typical representative of the old school, moreover phenomenally simple and maintainable. This completes the information about the problems of the Skoda Octavia. If you know more or do not agree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.